Hi everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, it's time for a makeup video and we're a brand new studio space to do it. Yes, I'm so excited. Let's get started and try out some many cosmetics from my drag queen friends. Yes, let's catch up a little bit, but first things first, as you already know, any products I use today are gonna be listed down below. It's like a fun, quirky thing I do. I'm a crazy, kooky girl. Now, I'm gonna glue my eyebrows down. I'll be right back. <laughs> Our foundation is on, I glued down my eyebrows, we are ready to go. Now, I don't think I've used these yet on the channel, they are the Trixie Sticks, I've been using S'more Sun. This is how she looks, it's adorable, right? Yeah, it's like a little lipstick, but with foundation. She's gotten a lot of love, I'm nearing the end of it, like it won't turn anymore, because <laughs> I've been using it a lot on tour. But yeah, I've been doing this to cut my cheeks, because I've been really into like doing cream on my cheeks again. I don't know what it is, I just woke up one morning and thought, my makeup doesn't really pop as much under lights as it used to, probably because I'm touring so much. But yeah, this is what I've been using now. And it's been working out. I like it. I'm only using the cheek area though. Now, it has been a minute since I have talked to you guys. Oh my God. Like we've just sat down and just hung out, you know? A lot's been going on. We're in a house now and everything has been cute so far. I will say this. Being a, like, not a homeowner, but like having a house as compared to an apartment has turned me into like a house person. Like you're really like aware of your surroundings now. Like I got that Ring app and girl, that Neighbors app will mess you up. Like I've turned into that paranoid neighbor that's just like, oh my God, there was a break in 17 miles away from me. We are in danger. <laughs> like that's totally where I am at this point. I have been obsessing over true crime lately. Like this one show, I've been telling all my friends about it. I'm obsessed. I shouldn't be, but I am. It's a lifetime show. Hear me out, hear me out. It's called Froggy. And this is like a term I had never heard before. Like where I'm from is called squatting. But apparently it's like when people find out that someone's living in their house without their knowledge and like living in the walls and a crawl space in their attic and just like going about their lives while these people are living in the house and they have no idea they're there. And every time something like goes wrong, they always immediately think it's ghosts. Like girls are having seances, pulling out the Ouija board, like the whole bit. Some girl burns sage throughout one of the episodes. <laughs> and it's always just like, some guy in their closet that's wearing all their clothes and hasn't bathed in four weeks. But needless to say, I am enthralled. Like the first couple episodes, I was like hooked. It's like, okay, this is oddly intense. <laughs> I have a lot of products to talk about today. So I'm gonna start my eyebrows off with something from Kimchi Chic. It's called the Spacey Nudes. And look at the back. The back is everything. It's Kimchi as an astronaut. <laughs> I love it. We're gonna do our eyebrows for this because it's all browns. Like it's a very nude look today because the <laughs> things I was sent were all nude stuff, which is fine because that's generally where I live anyway. And this is just a catch-up video, all right? Here we go. Let's do our eyebrows. We'll start off with this girl in the corner here. Just do our brows and map out where this look is going today. I wanted to go like a country western route because that's kind of the theme of this Trixie palette that I got in the mail. And yes, I am using a Kimchi Chic product, and if you would like to save 15% off at Kimchi Chic Beauty, be sure and use my code, James Mansfield. That was my bad. I turned the phone on. <laughs> I'm mad at myself. <laughs> Reset. Be sure and use my code, James Mansfield, for 15% off. Save some money. Okay, eyebrow on. I'm going to start with one eye on camera and we'll go work around that. We'll see where this place takes us, you know? What is it I'm obsessed with lately? Oh, okay, so those of my audience that are a little older, you may remember the author, Jacqueline Suzanne. I've been obsessed with her recently. I've been watching all of her old interviews. And like, I think it's because I'm always interested in people that like are artists, but were always treated like they weren't artists, if that makes any sense. Just like, they were mad disrespectful to her her whole career because she wrote what they called trashy books. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, like Jacqueline Suzanne was a women's author and she wrote like the, she's the prototype honestly for like a romantic novelist archetype, you know, like Jackie Collins and, and the like. So Jacqueline Suzanne was the first to really like make it big doing something like this where it's like the big salacious, who is she talking about celebrity scandal kind of novelist. And her big hit was Valley of the Dolls, which is like a monster success as like selling books goes. Like she broke records. Like she rivaled the Bible and the Quran. That's how much this book sold. Like people were obsessed with it. And it wasn't until like Harry Potter came out that it, her record was broken. But for a female novelist, this was like a huge success. But like the downside with this was that 
people would constantly tell her to her face, like, you're not artistic. What you do is not art. Like, what you do is garbage. And she just sat there and took it and, like, would sling it back at them. Just like, I think fun can be high art. If I, just because I wrote something fun doesn't mean it's not art. All right, we're going to go in with the Horse Girl palette from Trixie Cosmetics. And we are going to go in with our crease with Colt Classic and cut this crease up. But, like, I don't know. Back to the topic with Jacqueline Suzanne. What I always thought was really compelling about her is, like, reading more about her. Like, the height of her success she reached, she actually was suffering from breast cancer. So, like, she was slowly dying as she was, like, promoting these books. And she kept it to herself. Like, she didn't really, like, make a huge deal out of it or tell a lot of people. So, like, just think, like, she's sitting there on these talk shows as people trash her books and tell her she's not talented while she's slowly, like, you know, dying. Like, that's horrible to think about. And, like, she had a really good spirit about her. Like, she never let anything really get to her. And even one instance on a talk show where I think it was, like, Brosley Crawford, one of those, like, really, you know, windbag critics, like, was basically being very accusatory to her and saying, like, her work is garbage and she's not an artist. One of her good friends, Rex Reed, who was a campy critic from the 70s, very flamboyant gay guy who was known for his, like, wild takes, sprung up for the audience and said... I know for a fact he only read 30 pages of her novel. He never actually finished The Love Machine. And like everyone exploded like, girl, you got her. <laughs> but that was the kind of, you know, stuff she was met with, which I always thought was so crazy. It just reminds you of like other female authors. Like it's always stuff that's geared towards women where people get that kind of hostility. It kind of reminded me of, like, Stephanie Meyer in Twilight. Like people were really nasty to her when that book came out. And it's all just because... They got very successful very quickly and made a lot of money with something that was geared towards women. All right, I'm going to go in with a combination of Giddy Up and Hey Girl. So Hey Girl and Giddy Up. I'm just going to blend in this. Let's go in with some of these colors from the Kimchi palette. Very brown. This one and this one. I feel like I'm doing what Juno calls like Juno makeup, where like she puts makeup on to make it look like she's not wearing makeup. Like she just reshapes her face with makeup, which is super cool. That's always been a makeup style I've been obsessed with and I try and do a lot with my own drag, like when I'm performing. All right, I'm going to cut this crease and I'll be right back. All right, <laughs> be right back. Hello, horse girls. All right, here we go. Let's use Stirrup Trouble. Oh, I get it, Stirrups. <laughs> and Western Pleasure, I'm gonna mix those two. I gotta put a little bit in the corner here to create a nice little warmness. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Sexy. Cowgirls. I think of any cowgirl movies I actually watched that I really enjoyed. Well, like the, I like the aesthetics of westerns, but like the act, the practice of watching them, it doesn't bring back a nostalgic feeling like I thought it would. Because I used to watch them all the time with my grandfather. And mm, watching them back now, it's like, nah, not really. It doesn't hold up. <laughs> You watch Real Bravo, it's like, yeah, no, it doesn't hold up for me. It doesn't give me the same feeling. It was just nice for in that time. And then also, like, there's not a whole lot of fabulous westerns. I feel like there's a very small handful because it's one of those genres that just never got very fun. I feel like the only one I could really say I, like, is campy and fun that I enjoy the most is probably, like, the Mae West westerns. And she only made, like, two of them. There's My Little Chickadee. And then there is... On the Town. I think it's On the Town. That's a different movie. Something Town. If it pops in my mind, I'll let you know. But yeah, it's one of like the eight movies May was made where she plays, you know, the bad girl, the western town. I'm using Milk Cosmetics. It's their eyeliner. I've been really into eyeliner recently. I've recently got it back into my life. So I've been using this for like my under eye. I think it's because I like to smoke out underneath. So like, this is giving me that moment I need. That nice like 90s Pamela Anderson, Vixen kind of eye. And I don't care if it's a little rough because I'm gonna blend this out anyway. It's just gonna sit there for a moment. I'm excited to try out another product from the Horse Girl line. This one is Show Pony. It's her blush. Look at that. Yes, look at the monitor. Like that is really fun and bright. This is cute. All right, let's see. We use a Trixie blush brush. We are. Let's start putting this on. Whoa, that's really intense. <laughs> blend that a little more. I wasn't expecting it to be that packed with color. <laughs> That's a little much, but I'm into it. That got me right together. 
or I might mix it with something a little darker in the corners, but yeah, that's very bright and very colorful. I am not mad at that though. It's like 80s bright. It's like Technicolor bright. I love that. Okay, I'm gonna mix it though. I have another blush from Daphna Beauty. Thank you so much for sending me this, guys. I love you guys. You know, Vegas Locals, Daphna Beauty. This is their Rose Blush Palette. And I'm gonna be using the Rose. That nice vintage kind of blush. Their whole aesthetic is vintage, which I really love. Put that here in the pocket, just to blend it out and give it more shadow. Oh baby, I'm looking at myself in the monitor and I am like colorful. <laughs> it's like, you know, back in the 80s and they used to colorize all the old black and white movies and everyone was really, really bright. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> I think like a fright orange wig. You know what, I'm gonna put my highlight on too so that I'll kind of mute it some more, but it's fun so far. Like, that's really fun. Ooh, ooh. Let's do lips. You guys, I also have another product from them. So I'm gonna use Trixie and Daphna again. I wanna try out her lippy, which is Eden. So pretty, like it's a really pretty nude color. Like I've been wearing it on the road recently and I've been obsessed. It's become like my new go-to. I used to use Junebug a lot from the Juno Birch collection. But this one, she's been taking the slot. I've been loving it. Did you know I love me a nude lip? Let's trace out our lips. Let's go in with the Horse Girl palette. Let's see what we have here that we can make lips from. I think Stir Up Trouble would be a good lip color. Let's try that. Stir Up Trouble. Oh yeah, that's cute. That would be a definite great lip color. I've recently started looking at old pictures of myself and like ways I used to do my makeup and wondering like, why don't I do that anymore? Like some of it wasn't terrible. Like I've recently gone back to this lip, just doing the whole round lip with no arch. I was wondering like, I should probably try and recreate some of that old makeup. Cause like some of the stuff I did back then is wild. <laughs> like what I thought would actually work and what I thought was like a life hack for drag. And it was actually just making things harder for me. It's like, you know, setting up the game Mousetrap without the instructions, just going with it and seeing where life takes you. All right, our lips are lined. Let's try out Eden. If I try it, I'm just gonna show it off for you guys. I've been trying her out, okay? Here we go. Let that set for a little bit. It's very thin, but I like about it is that it's buildable. And like when it's thin like that, like it starts to seep through in areas where I line my lips and it creates like a really nice ombre, which I really love. It makes the lips look more like they're real. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna let that dry down and I'll go in my other lipstick. But what can I do in the meantime? Let's see. Hmm, I probably should highlight. Let's do that. Let's highlight our face. I've recently gone back to this Derma Blend. This one is Warm Ivory for my highlight. Using the tiniest bit, because a little bit goes a long way with this, okay? I think I got this for when I put ginger in drag. <laughs> and now it's just like, I'm trying to use up all the makeup I got. Because I don't like buying more makeup, especially when it's expensive. It's just been sitting here this whole time. This foundation is not cheap. And like I said, it's gonna mute the blush a little bit too, which would be nice. It creates like a nice little effect. I don't mind so much having rosy cheeks anymore. It used to really bother me, but now I'm so, I actually really like it. It's nice to look like you're wearing makeup. I feel like I wear more makeup on my cheeks now than I do my eyes. <laughs> more color, at least. Let me tell you, I thought I was giving it to y'all. Like, I recently did a booking for Halloween, and my thing is just, like, I usually do, like, nudes and stuff like that but for Halloween. I was like, you know what? We're gonna go full Frankenfur. Let's give it to the kids. I had full-on blue eyeshadow with bright red lips, and like pink, pink, pink blush. And I looked in the mirror as I was doing it, it's just like, this is a lot of makeup for me. <laughs> I reached that point now where I, I do makeup sort of like, you know, all the time I do the same makeup a lot because I just like having a look that's distinctive, that's me. So like when I put on like a lot of colors and a lot of different stuff, it's just like, woof. <laughs> it's like, I almost felt like Mimi Bobek. I'm like, like this is a lot. <laughs> like I felt like someone's mom's gonna scold me for being too fast. All right, I think the lips have dried down enough. Like I saw, like I said before, like it creates that ombre with the way I lined them. Like it bled into it and it looks really fun and natural. Mm. Lips are oh so kissable. All right, Daphna, thank you again for this beautiful carrying case. This is so cute. They sent me a lot of fun goodies. I've been digging into all of them. We're gonna use a lipstick from them. It is vintage mob we're gonna use. I'll show it off. 
Vintage Mod by Daphna Beauty. And what I like about this is like the lipstick screws shut so it really stays airtight. Lift that up. Mm-hmm. It has that fun little like cute vintage ad kind of pink. Like it's super fun and super flirty. Yeah, Daphna, check them out. They're fabulous. It's all like pinup aesthetic. I'm obsessed. It's all very, very pink. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What do I need now? I feel like I should do something more with the eyes. Let's try it out. Let's see. Let's do, let's, let's do like a shimmer. Ooh, sugar cube looks fun. Let's try that out. I also have to try out something else from Trixie. She sent me all these setting sprays. I used the priming spray to put my, my foundation on. I've been using this on the road. Stand by it. It is very good. And the setting spray also is fabulous. And we're going to use it today because we're going to go in with sugar cube and add a little brightness to the inside of the eye. Sugar cube. Really pack that brush and spray it with the setting spray. Because it shimmers, you know, I always just do this. It helps it glide on and get a nice pop. Gorge. That's like a fun, nice, nude shimmer. Especially for this palette, it complements everything really well. Also from Daphna, I've been really back into like highlighting again. Like I'm falling back into old habits. I'm not ashamed, y'all. I don't care. <laughs> I think it's pretty. So we're gonna go in with Glow and add a little highlight back to the cheek. I'm obsessed. I don't know why I stopped doing this. I stopped doing highlight for a long time and I don't know why. Like it's such a fun look. It makes you feel like Marilyn Monroe. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Now I'm gonna do some finishing touches and I'll be right back with the final results. <laughs> back. Welcome back. This is the final result. Yes. I have to say the Trixie Cosmetic Horse Curl Collection is James Mansfield approved. Bing. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, this is such a pretty look. I feel so cutesy. Oh my God. It's very nude, very me. <laughs> nude year, nude me. Yes. Oh my goodness. Now my favorite product I use would have to be Eden, the lippy from Trixie Cosmetics. I love this, okay? It's like in my new rotation as far as like lip colors go, because you know I love me a new lip. And I have to say the Horse Girl palette was not bad, all right? I loved it. I'm gonna use this a lot, honestly. It's gonna be in my rotation now with the Bottle Blonde because I love all these colors. I'm excited to dip in the other ones I haven't got a chance to use yet, honestly. Good job, honey. Now off topic, but I actually got this in PR recently. They sent me this, yes, thank you so much. Jolly Parton's new book, all about her costumes and wigs she's worn throughout the years. I am so excited, like look at that. <laughs> Beyond the seams, or behind the scenes, behind the seams, yes. Look at Dolly, so radiant, so fun, so full of light. Oh my goodness, like I'm so excited to page through this thing because I'm obsessed with Dolly's look throughout the years, as you can tell. <laughs> I love her aesthetic, like she is unapologetically camp and she has made a whole career from it. Now, this has been so much fun to do. I always love like going into like these nice, like super over the top kind of country-ish looks. Cause it's just fun to like dabble in, you know? It's all costume, it's all fun, it's all play. Now, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and see me style a not Elvira wig from Amazon. Or see me, Jasmine Kennedy, and Maddie Morphosis play RuPaul's Drag Race Monopoly. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll make sure there's a frogger living in your house. So click it.